going to do a review of the Waveshare 3.5 inch ESP32 uh, with a touch screen. It's uh, got a nice display. You can swipe and touch and do different things. Uh, scroll in all different directions. It also supports landscape and portrait. And it also exposes a bunch of uh, IO headers from the ESP32 on the back. And uh, there's a camera input connection for a battery and a SD card. It has a lot of really nice features that make it uh, good for small projects. It's only about 30, 40 bucks, I think. And uh, I'll have a link in the description on how to get hold of them. I'll run through a feature demo. Then I'll go over the LVGL demo along with how to build it under platform IO and how to present the screen in portrait or landscape. Comes simply packaged with a speaker and if you also order it a camera. Comes wrapped in a bag with a bit of foam protecting the screen. There's some screw holes on the back for mounting the case if you want to put a case around it plug it into a USB-C power supply and with 5 volts it'll fire up there's a touch screen program that runs for a start where you can draw on the screen hit the little X and it'll fire up into this color changing view swipe right and it'll display the system settings where you can see information about the RAM and CPU temperatures. Then the battery management system where all the voltages are. The next screen's very interesting because it holds the information about the gyro that's inside it. You'll see the numbers change as I rotate the device. So the angles will rotate, uh, sorry, the angles will increase or decrease depending on the rotation and the gyro X, Y, and Z, which the gravity in that direction. If we swipe again, we'll go to the camera screen. There's no camera connected at the moment. Then we can get to the last screen, which is the Wi-Fi, where we can quickly run a Wi-Fi scan to see what's around. The camera mounts on the back of the device just there. You can see it uh, has one of those thin flexible connectors. And when you run the app, you close the drawing thing and swipe across the screen a couple of times and it'll go to the camera view. You can see there, uh, it refreshes, it looks like once or twice a second. And uh, if you hold it still, it doesn't take a, a, a bad photo. There's two connectors on the back for the batteries. Uh, one's for the real-time clock and the other is for just a battery to power the system. So you run the software with the battery connected and then swipe across until you get to the battery management screen. And here you can see up the top it's charging and the voltages of different parts of the system, the supply voltage and everything. So if you unplug the battery now you should be able to see that it's not charging at the top and you can see the VBUS voltage is zero and the battery's running down. The device comes with a tiny speaker and microphone. There's a plug at the back where you plug it in and then with the app running you can press record and it will record a short message. Uh, you say hello, hello and then once you've finished recording you hit stop and then it'll play back that recording. Uh, I'd like to demonstrate it, but my microphone on the phone is hopeless. This is a demo of the landscape view of the sample LGVA software. So I power it on and it starts up in this main sort of screen here. Uh, we can scroll up and down, pick things from the uh, checkbox and different things like that uh, say you know I'm a hard worker what experience I've got you could enter your name here uh, the keyboard is very tiny but uh, you can do that 
uh, then you can just swipe across to go to the next screen or if you want you can also just hit the analyst button and then get across to this screen there's graphs uh, different revenue uh, circular dials moving screens you can see it continuously updating there and then the last screen is some other information with graphics and that kind of stuff we go back to the analytics screen and scroll up to the top you can uh, see the different graphs and you can also see a continuous horizontal graph as well so this one here when you touch it it shows each point and the scales move as well as you can touch the uh, button along the bottom here and that'll change the style it's really easy to develop uh, using platform io and so if you install a platform io library then you'll be able to download the sample code from uh, lvgl and also uh, just use the code in my github repository so if you open that in visual studio code after you've installed platform io uh, you should be able to build the project straight away it'll automatically download all the libraries you need this is different to uh, Arduino where you have to select the individual libraries which is a real pain in the ass so once it's started then you select once it's uh, opened you should be able to open the main then you open the platform IO folder at the top of the main file it's got the instructions so open the platform IO expand LVGL there'll be a demo folder and you need to drag it into the source folder where you can see it there then you'll you can build the file and it'll pop up the error and you can just jump to the error or you can just go in and modify those to include files as well and they can be found down there in the draw folder so you just edit those just put dot dot slash in them and then the project will build click that arrow and it'll build and you can see it downloading all the libraries and then it'll execute and you can see it's completed okay so to control the landscape or portrait mode there's a, a define there so if you uh, uncomment that it'll be in landscape mode or you comment it it'll be in portrait mode so that determines which way the screen appears and it's not difficult to uh, swap between the two it's basically it just changes a couple of parameters further down in the code so when it creates the display here if it's in portrait it uses height and width and a different drawing function and if it's in a landscape it uses width and height up here and it also applies a rotation which makes the touch screen align with the way everything's drawn so the way it draws it in the other landscape is using this callback function here if you have a look at the callback function we'll jump to it and it will say whether we draw the screen vertically or horizontally so here's the normal drawing so we just receive the uh, blob of memory and we write it to the graphics display however if we're drawing it in landscape mode we have to receive the blob of memory copy it into a buffer that we create one time so this is not thread safe and then we get the orientation of the the pointers to the buffer and we rotate the buffer in memory so that's copying every point 90 degrees in the buffer so that runs a bit slower so you'll notice landscape mode runs slightly slower than portrait mode uh, but the LVGL library is a good library it's got lots of tools and all the code for that complete demo is there so you can easily just have a look at the code and go I like that function and copy that piece into your code you can see I've only used a small amount of memory to create that whole demo and upload it so that's it 
uh, I've left a referral link and the access to the GitHub repository where you can download the code and play with it yourself. Let me know if you liked it and uh, that's all from Cass and I. Bye.